welcome back to another beer knowledge video. Still trying to come up with some terms for this, but uh, this one is all but the four main ingredients in beer. So either you're getting into brewing and you want to know what the four main ingredients is, or you just love beer and you're interested in the four main ingredients of beer. You don't know who I am, it's Big Rob, and you can check me out on my blog. Geez, that almost kind of rhymed, not quite though. Um, at uh, MBE Home Brewing. MBE Home Brewing, you're going to find um, everything about majority of beer at the moment. We are branching into, you know, wine need, things like that, but it's, it's beer knowledge, it's, it's recipes on if you wanted to get into brewing your own beer, we cover all that type of stuff as well. If you're into brewing, I do offer um, as a gift to you my five top favorite recipes from my brew pub that I used to own. I'm giving those away so you can check that out. There'll be a link under this video. Subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, give it a like. If you don't, it's okay. I got broad shoulders. I can deal. Four main ingredients of beer, guys. Cheers, first of all. Ah. Nowadays, there are a lot more ingredients going into beer than four. Um, brewers are always experimenting. I've seen, I won't even tell you everything. I've seen brewers put in the beer, but it's a, it's a lot of different things. Juices, jams, purees. Um, flowers, um, um, my brew pub, my buddy, he, he was great. It was a great beer. He made a, a spruce tips beer, called it just the tip. Um, great beer, uh, man, oh, just all kinds of stuff. Anything flavorful that you, you, you can put in there, honey, of course, just all kinds of different ingredients. But there are four main ingredients um, in some parts of the world. Um, in, in Germany, uh, let me get this right. Uh, I got my blog here in front of me. I don't even want to brutalize it anyway. There was a law way back in, in time that advised that, um, there it is, the German purity laws of 1516, baby, actually ruled that the four main ingredients were only to be used in beer. Um, and in many parts of the world, they still abide by that. And in many other parts, as I've just told you, they do not. Four main ingredients of beer, da, 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 water, grains, yeast, and all you hopheads favorites, the old hopskies. So let's let's take a quick look at each one. Um, water is actually makes up 90% of your beer, um, is the largest percentage out of the ingredients, I guess if that makes any sense. The largest amount of ingredients is made, no, it's not making any damn sense. 90% of beer is water, okay? So a lot of brewers, if you're home brewing or craft brewing, they don't give a lot of consideration to this because all water is not created equal. Um, you'll want to make sure you have a high quality water. Um, you don't want to have any chlorine in it. You want to get rid of that. You, you know, use some sort of a system to do that or worst case scenario, you let your water sit out for 24 hours so it'll evaporate out. Um, back in the day, uh, beers were actually made based on the water profile because nowadays we can change the water and manipulate it and on, on this blog post that I'm going to put a link to if you're into brewing I'm going to put a link to um, one of my posts where I teach you how to adjust your water but um, now we can manipulate our water to resemble water sources from all around the world but back in the day before they could do that um, certain beers could only be brewed in certain places because of the type of water for example um, some great examples are stouts um, are known from being Dublin Ireland Vienna lagers Vienna Austria wheat beers from Bavaria Germany Pilsners from Pilsen Czech Republic and pale ales from Burton on Trump in on Trump I said on Trent and not Burton on Trump Burton on Trent in England um, and that and those type of beers were just <clears throat> the type of beers that were brewed were ideal for the type of water in those places water is very important grains or malts um, it's hard to say that they're the single most important because without water there'd be none no beer but without any grains there wouldn't be either Brent grains determine the 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 color the mouthfeel um, the uh, alcohol percentage, um, taste, aroma, um, just just a whole host of things. You you can you can completely um, you know manipulate um, your beer just by switching a few grains around. Um, different grains involved involved are barley, which is the most used um, wheat because of its um, uh, called genetic makeup. Um, it just it's just ideal uh, for making beer. Its kernels are uh, perfect size. Um, they they're all they're filled with brewing um, starches um, that. Um, uh, 
convert over into the alcohol and the yeast goes to eat them. Um, has a large amount of starch per grain, I should say, which does provide those fermentable sugars, allows a higher alcohol content. They have the husks are really good for um, filtering during the beer brewing process. So the majority of beers are made up of barley. Um, oats are typically used in stouts. They provide a rich, smooth, kind of creamy uh, taste. Think oatmeal. Um, wheat is also another uh, popular um, grain that is used a lot. Um, does create a thicker body and mouthfeel as well, as well as provides a lot longer lasting head uh, on the beer. So if you wanted a longer, uh, bigger head in your beer, when you're making a recipe, you'd add a little bit of wheat. Um, rye, of course, corn and rice. Um, they do have their place in, in making beer. They do get a bad rap because a lot of the commercial breweries back in the day started replacing the higher quality grains with corn and rice because they were cheaper. Um, they blamed it on the recession or World War II and grain shortages. But when all that came back, they continued to use those grains because they are cheaper to use. However, um, if used correctly, corn can provide a nice smooth sweetness to the beer. Um, well, and giving it a light body and improving its clarity. This is a lager, so they definitely use some corn or rice in here. Rice can also be used to lighten the body while providing crisp flavors. Next up are the good old hops. Um, hops um, were not always in beer. Um, hops um, um, came around, let me see, beer's been around for a thousand years. Hops came around, came around as being a beer ingredient, ingredient around the ninth century. Um, hops have become synonymous now with craft beer, um, you know, People now buy their beer based off of how many hops, how many IBUs, you know, just how cloudy it is from hop debris. It's gotten a little insane, if you ask me. But originally, hops were used to a uh, few reasons. Um, originally, they were used to um, to balance out the, and they still are. Um, they add some bitterness, which balances out the sweetness from the malt. Okay. Um, if you just had a beer without hops, it'd be a very sweet beer. And back in the day, they used to use herbs and spices and such instead of the hops. Um, and the other reason that um, hops came into play was they are a preservative. So there's a story of how the IPAs came into existence. Some people call it bullshit. I don't care. It's a story I go with. Um, back in the day when the British colonies down in India, they wanted some of the beer. They found that they couldn't get the beer down there because... It would spoil on the long sea voyage, so they upped the alcohol content and they hopped the shade out of it, and that preserved the beer long enough to get down there, and hence your IPA was invented. Pretty cool. Uh, um, nowadays, there's hundreds of varieties of hops, um, new strains coming out all the time. You know, you can get all kinds of different flavors from passion fruit to citrus to spice to earthy to mango. To, it, it's, it's wild, all the different flavors that you can get. The hops can um, add flavor. Um, big time, um, they add aroma, okay, and a lot of the hop, um, what, 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 a lot of what the hop gives to the beer is the aroma, but when you smell something, it does influence your taste buds as well, so you, you smell it, you think you're tasting it, but it does, it does influence the, uh, the taste as well, and it can influence the clarity too, depending on how they dry hop, dry hop is when you, this is the fermenter, this is when the beer's in the fermenter for a day or two, you add a bunch of hops in on top of it, and it, it clouds it up, adds a lot more aroma to it. Woo, baby, I'm getting out of breath. We're right, going to the last one, almost done. Yeast is an incredibly vital component to making beer. Now, back in the day, a little history lesson, when they first started making beers, they had no idea what was actually causing the alcohol. It wasn't until many years later that they were able to um, pinpoint that it was this yeast and then start cultivating and harvesting and so on and so forth. Back in the day, it was a wild yeast, so they would make this batch of, you know, sugary substance put it out in a wild yeast would inoculate it and uh, turn it into uh, alcohol i guess they thought maybe the gods were converting it or something for them what have you um nowadays um the yeast you can actually there, there's three different types of yeast you can still use wild yeast which a lot of sour beers use there's lager yeast which is a bottom fermenting yeast so if you want to brew lager you would use a bottom fermenting yeast which sounds exactly is exactly as it sounds it ferments towards the bottom Ale is a top fermenting yeast, which ferments towards the top. Um, they ferment at different temperatures. Ale needs a warmer temperature to ferment. Lager needs a colder temperature to ferment. As a result, lager takes longer, but you're going to get a more cr crisp, clear, clean profile from a lager yeast versus an ale yeast. Tons of different varieties and strains of each of these categories. And just by changing 
the yeast, you can completely change the beer. I've seen a beer that has the exact same ingredients, exact, 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 exact. Two different yeast used, an American ale yeast and an English ale yeast, total different color on the beer. One, the American one was much lighter in color and the, in, in color and um, total different taste as well. Uh, much lighter taste on the American taste in one as well versus the British one. Um, so really wild. You can't even tell that they're anywhere near being the same type of beers. So that's what I got, guys. Uh, I've already gone over the additional beer ingredients people toss into their mixes now. So we covered that. That's what I got, guys. I've passed the 10 minutes mark. So Big Rob, he's getting out of here. So uh, check out the link below if you want more details. I will send, it'll send you over to this blog post. Subscribe, like it, drop a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite beer ingredient is that I have not covered. What kind of crazy stuff you throw into yours. That's what I got, guys. Big Rob, he's gone.